Well, welcome everyone, and um, we will start our service off with our opening song, number 381, Spirit of Life. Tell me the stories of Jesus.
truth. We confess that we are weighed down by our feelings. Envy distances us from other people. Greed alerts us to our own desires. We might be reconciliation. We create conflicts. Where you call us to give, we take. Where your presence beckons, we resist. Deal with us not as we deserve, O God, but forgive us, cleanse us, and teach us your way. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God who loves and sustains you hears your plea. The Lord desires for you a welcome into the blessed community of freedom and life. You are forgiven. Remember the poor and the outcast welcome the child, and you will know as well as your own welcome in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of all things, now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I do have a bag here today, and there's some, some things in the bag, so who would like to look into the bag? Art? Thank you, Art. So we don't have Art, we have Louise. We have our Sherry. We have Sherry good Art. Okay. <laughs> I will not be worried about Never mind. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> it's all pretty taken up, right? There's three in there, too. There are a couple in there, too. So what, what do those look like? Well, they look like how to get involved with all affairs, especially <laughs> judging. Especially judging, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you've seen the pies, and we can show, you've seen all the pies and the buttercups, things like that. So a lot of them got ribbons on, so how do you think they determined how they got ribbons? Somebody had to judge them. Somebody had to judge them, okay. And we had, it was just by coincidence, we had Elva Taggart at, um, at the service at Chisholm. So there happened to be two judges in the room. <laughs> and when we do judge, we wear white. And, uh, but we have these things and we, we, have, we follow these books and they're called judging standards. So what sort of ju judging standards do you think there are, Lori? Judging. Quality. Quality? Okay. Taste. Taste, that's, yeah. Presentation. Which? Presentation or appearance. Presentation or appearance, yeah. So, and that's what happens is actually for, and it's based on this one here, like there's three different books. So this is actually the home craft, that's all the crafts and the baking and, and that. Then there's actually, um, and this is the one that Anne's brother-in-law uses the most, is, is he the vegetable judge? This is agriculture and horticulture judging standards. Now in here, there's not enough information, even though it's considered horticulture, not enough information in this book for flowers. So then it's, um, this is uh, the Horticultural Association Ontario. We have this book to judge flowers, which I was using this book a lot this year because we're judging flowers so you have the judging standards to go with and that helps you determine which one to put first and which one to put second and that's the greatest so our Bible story today we have the disciples saying who's the greatest sort of like who's going to get the red ribbon right or the blue ribbon if you're in the States so uh, that's where it's it's there but there's standards to be the greatest, and as a society, we do judge people like their butter tarts. Oh, they don't, they're uh, just a little bit different color on the pastry or, or something like that. 
But Jesus, they were arguing about who was the greatest, and Jesus said a different set of standards than what they're used to. So we're going to learn what Jesus said the standards are for being the greatest. And I thought, you guys were all talking about the baking before we started. This is a good lead in. So. <laughs> So we'll start with our scripture, and the first is Psalm number one, and Anne wants to play it through twice, the refrain, and then we will sing it on the third time. He said to them, Whoever welcomes such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. These words are offered wisdom for our journey. May we walk together in their truth. As a certified fair judge, in many different categories, I have spent the last month and a half deciding which entries are the greatest. As a judge, I'm the one who decides who gets that first place in the Canada, the Red Ribbon, and in the US, the Blue Ribbon. And as I've shown in the book, there are judging standards that I have learned and that I follow 
when deciding which entry to put that ribbon on. Like a fair judge, the disciples are deciding who is the greatest. But in this scripture, the judging standards are quite different than what they expect. In the beginning of this scripture selection, it does not even mention a contest or a dispute of who is the greatest. In the beginning of this selection, Jesus is sharing with the disciples the second passion prediction in the Gospel of Mark. It, in, in that prediction, it says, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. With that little tidbit added, Actually, this time in the passion prediction, it says that he would be betrayed by human hands. And that's a little tidbit that is added. And it says that they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Many knew Jesus' greatness, especially the three disciples that, took, that he took up the mountain to witness the transfiguration. They knew Jesus' potential, and they were confused and afraid to ask the details, especially the part that Jesus would be betrayed into human hands. The disciples, even the ones who did not go up the mountain for the transfiguration, could see the greatness of Jesus in his healings and miracles. They could not imagine this prediction coming true. But the fact that Jesus said it for a second time indicated that it could come true. But the disciples still saw in Jesus greatness, and they tried to avoid what Jesus was saying. They wanted to skip over the pain of death and loss. So in an attempt to avoid the difficult conversation, the disciples on their journey to Capernaum began talking with each other about who was the greatest among them. Like a fair judge, they judged themselves based on their merits and who they were aligned with in the establishment. Jesus, during this conversation, or arguments, remained silent, and he listened to what they were saying, whether they knew he was listening or not. Listening to them, Jesus decided to turn this conversation, this argument, into a learning opportunity. It says that when they came to Capernaum and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? And it said the disciples were silent. And that's probably because they did not know that Jesus was listening to them arguing. I also believe they were embarrassed that Jesus heard them. To break the silence, Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. This was Jesus' judging standard that whoever wants to be the greatest must serve all. Jesus' standards of who is the greatest is different from the standards of that society, where power and prestige were considered to be the greatest. The reason he said this is because the disciples thought, and they argued that they were the greatest because they were following or were close to Jesus, who displayed greatness. But Jesus, in saying this, is pointing to the mission to be servant of all. Jesus, in his ministry and his mission, was sent to lift up the poor, to lift up the oppressed. To demonstrate this, Jesus 
it took a little child and put it among them. And taking it into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The reason he took the child was that children in that context were considered to be a nuisance, and they were among the lowest in society. Children were often excluded from events, and they would always be last when it came to eating. Jesus, in bringing in the child, says that if one is considered to be great, they must serve those that are last. Jesus in his ministry had different standards. He lifted up the poor and served those who were on the margins of society. Jesus said, if the one welcomes this child, then they would welcome me and the one who sent me. Jesus states that serving all, that serving all is his calling. It is in this statement he points to what the disciples were avoiding. Jesus, in lifting up the children, in lifting up the poor and those who, are, who the public standard put as last, created tension with the authorities. The religious and political authorities did not like the judging standards he was ushering in. Jesus could have resisted this tension and went along with those standards, but he did not. He served the least. By being betrayed, captured, put on trial, and put to death, he did not go along with those standards. It is this act of putting himself last that became the greatest when he defeated death by walking out of the tomb three days later. In this message, Jesus was giving us standards and God's standards for greatness. The disciples would risk their own lives, risk their way of being. They would suffer pain and loss. But after the loss and after serving others, they would share in the greatness of new life. Like a judge in a fair, we in society have a set of standards that were created by human hands to determine who is the greatest. Like a fair judge, they looked at imperfections and compared them to others. Often people are excluded because of race, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, or body shape and size. In the media and on television, there is a standard of what women and men are supposed to look like. Many put these stars on pedestals saying they are the greatest. Images of the greatest are displayed on television and billboard ads. And still in politics, it is white men that are often successful in the ballot results. Many people are still judged today based on their appearance and or economic background. Like the disciples, we try to avoid the pain. We try to avoid difficult discussions. We live in a death-denying society. People avoid talking about their own death, and when someone who is dying tries to bring it up, it is often to deaf ears, or they choose to talk about something else. In all churches, Good Friday, is one of the least attended services of the year. People often find the story of the death of Jesus to be depressing. But in contrast to, the, like, to that, like the disciples, Easter morning services are well attended as they display the greatness of the resurrection. But like the disciples, it is great to celebrate the resurrection, but to get there is the path of suffering, of loss and pain and death. 
There is a lot of work to get to the greatness of the resurrection. The greatness does not come easy. It involves giving up part of your life. It involves experiencing failure. It involves facing criticism. It involves learning what it really means to become the greatest. In winning the greatest butter tarts, I did not become the greatest right away. I tried my best and received criticism. I made mistakes and I learned from them. Many today, when they get out of school, they want the best paying job. But I believe it takes work. It means serving others and beginning at a lower paying job. It is working with those that are least in the company that one can serve and be a leader of all. It's, it is being with and standing up for the poor in our society that we can become the greatest. Sometimes when doing this, we are going out of our comfort zone, out of the traditions in which we were raised. By serving all, we're experiencing God's love and God's creation from a different point of view. Jesus in his ministry taught us to love one another and to love all. One way of sharing and experiencing this love is to be with those who are on the margins of society. The standards for greatness, as stated by Jesus, is quite clear. To be great, one must be at, at last and serve those that are last. By moving from first to last in our lives, we go through a transformation of leaving our lives and our prejudices aside. In doing so, we embrace the love of God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. This is the path to greatness, and God will be with us to help us through and support us in whatever challenge and change we face. Thanks be to God. Amen. And talk about that love, we will sing our next hymn, number 340, Jesus, Friend of Little Children. <coughs>
something to look forward to. Um, and then Chisholm's Turkey Supper is on October 5th as well. And um, I, the 5 o'clock slot is sold out, but the rest are, are available there. And take out available after 6 p.m. if there's quantities for that. And uh, apple pies will be made um, on October 9th. Um, and picked up is October 11th. Progressing well. Progressing well, okay. Yeah. It'll be a whole different world downstairs. <laughs> okay. And on October 20th, we have our, um, after the service, our meeting and secret ballot vote on whether we will become an affirming congregation. And you must be in person to vote. Um, so, I hope to see many people there, and, uh, and I hope all of you have been reading those little reflections to guide you through the journey of becoming a firm. Okay. And any other announcements? Okay, hearing that, we'll move to your generosity matters. Iniquitian Language Revival Group. The Inuitian language is the cultural foundation of the Inuit people who live in the central Canadian Arctic. The word Inuitian literally means to be like an Inuit, a person. Today, fewer than 600 people can speak Inuitian fluently, with many having lost the language and many were taken from their communities and sent to residential schools. Mission and Service Partner, Critica Trick, the Kennequit Kitchimut Heritage Society in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut, is dedicated to keeping Inukin alive. They offer one-on-one -on -one language immersion sessions with mentors to inspire reconnection. Since the initial gathering of the Inukin team in 2021, many significant successes have occurred. Over the past year, the team has worked hard together, both in person and online, to create helpful resources for revitalizing the Inukitan language. They have spent many hours making sure these resources will make a positive impact. One big success is the development of the Inukitan Dictionary app, which is newly available for free on Android and Apple. The team has also created a beginner Inukitan curriculum called Inukitjujua and is working on lessons for more advanced levels. They're also teaming up with linguist Richard Compton from the University of Quebec at Montreal to create a community grammar of Inukitun. Your compassionate gifts to mission and service are supporting programs that help preserve language and culture. Speaking of gifts and generosity, we all have gifts to share, whether it's gifts of time, talent, or treasure. We will now take a moment to dedicate these gifts by singing More Voices 191. What can I do?
We spend too much time and energy worrying about things that are largely outside of our control. We spend too little time trusting you, O oh God, and too little time living the life you call us to lead. We get turned around when things seem muddled. Help us to trust in you rather than our own wisdom, so we may have abundance in our lives making room for the well-being of people beyond our own circles. Hear our prayers for the world in which we live, love, struggle, triumph, and suffer. We know that you are in all things, so help us to sense you in the suffering of our neighbors, that we may reach out to help. Help us to sense you in the injustices of our society, that we may work for change. And now we ask that you hear our prayers spoken or aloud for those that are in our hearts. For Faith P. Joe. Help us to recognize your wisdom in the people we least expect to have it, even from the people we most want to judge. Help us to see your divine image in the people the world calls foolish, knowing that you love all your children. We have never met someone you do not love. We will never meet someone Humbly we pray. Amen. And we will sing our last hymn, number 595 in Voices United. We are pilgrims.
Part of that journey that we're all on involves sharing the love and grace of God in the face of opposition and criticism. As you go along that path together, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace.